So for this week's video, I thought I would share my favorite art supplies for art journaling. So for this week's video, I thought I would share my favorite art supplies for art journaling. And I'm kind of gonna cover things that I've been using in the past few weeks. I've had quite a lot of comments and questions about where I find my stuff and what my favorite art supplies would be for, for art journaling. And so I'm just gonna go on the things that I've literally been using um, this year for 2021. and. I've picked out the things that I use most regularly. So if you were just starting out and you haven't done journaling before like this, a lot of you are saying, you know, it's quite new to you and that you don't know where to get the stuff from and then what you would need. This is a kind of like really easy and my most used items because I think often we can kind of get a bit carried away buying art supplies, can't we? And everything looks so yummy and it's all like treasure and it's yeah we we tend to have things that we then don't use so this is the stuff i actually use is what i'm trying to say so my top favorite things if you like some of them aren't very exciting but they are necessary if you know what i mean so let's move that to the side then and see what we've got i'm not sure if i've got everything in shot now I know in last week's video you will have seen me put together this little pack of ephemera so all the bits and bobs in here are kind of included into the category or the this this side of the table if you like where I've got collage papers so I've just grabbed a few of my different types of collage paper if you've seen in any of my other videos as well you'll know that I've got three big boxes massive boxes actually far too much collage stuff and you do find as well once you start doing sort of this kind of project that you find things around the house you start collecting freebies menus tickets that kind of thing and so you can use all sorts of collage materials and you think oh well, I'll just keep that I'll keep that I'll keep that and the other thing I do which you will have seen as well is I make myself journaling sheets so hang on a sec I'll just bring into the shop this basket of ephemera as well <laughs> but basically and obviously there's loads of ribbons and lace and things in there as well I let's see if I can find one that I made well I make myself journaling sheets and I either sort of copy some of my own artwork or I make pages of you know maybe a poem that I've written or some quotes that I've found and then I include that in this in this category so let's just move that out of the way there we go and then I can use you know printouts if I want to add little things onto my journal and also pages like um, yeah this one so we did this one last time and yeah you can see here I've got some and on this one and this one here as well a little bit so I've got you know handwriting and also a mixture of the typed out font as well 
Um, one of the things I'd like to get is an old typewriter. I've wanted one for years, but you can find nice fonts, you know, online and then print them off. So you don't need a typewriter. It's just that, yeah, I'd really like one. So that's on my wish list, maybe for my birthday. <laughs> Yeah, so really quickly then, some of the collage stuff that I use a lot are paper pads like this one. And I get most of mine from a company in the UK called The Works. So I know in the US you'd probably go somewhere like maybe Michael's or somewhere like that. But this is a really budget shop. And so you can get all sorts for not too much money. And that's really good too. And then you don't feel too precious about ripping it up and stuff. I've also got a, a clear envelope here, which is literally just full of tissue paper. I love using tissue paper and I save um, paper that I get sent presents and I reuse it. So then it's more meaningful. For, for example, I know that this tissue paper was a present from my mum. And then I've got this tissue paper here, which was a present from my sister. So. That's really nice. And then I also use a lot of the time as well. And indeed, I needed larger paper to make the pages in this journal. So paper like this has come from a larger paper pad. And again, this paper pad, it hasn't got a back anymore because I've had it years, but it's just a selection of papers, obviously bigger than this one. So this I can do, you know, different things with, but I can actually make pages out of this. So what I'm saying is it's really handy to have different sizes and a larger size is very useful if you've got pretty patterned paper. So you could use wallpaper, you could paint your own, you could print on your own, you can do all sorts of things. You know, if you've got like um, a jelly plate or something like that, you can create your own pretty papers. But I think it's nice to have some in your kit that's ready done and then you've got some things to start with. It's like, you know, not inventing the wheel every time. So that's collage ephemera, if you like. Now that's number one. Okay, so number two, let's move on to the really non-exciting but necessary glue and scissors. So I always get asked about what glues I use and what I use them for. And so I'll do a really quick recap here. The other thing I would include in, in this sort of category as well would be the cutting mat and knife, the plastic free tape that I've been using and I've got two different sizes and the glues, so scissors of course as well. So I've got here, I've got the mat medium which is by Pabeo which is a budget, you can buy this online. I've got a glue stick, any glue stick will do. I've got a slightly stronger adhesive, which is all purpose, it's called Yoohoo, solvent free. And then I've got a really strong glue that I usually use for my jewellery making. And this one is E6000 Plus. And basically this is a multi-surface all weather adhesive. Okay, no odour on that one. So. Yeah, I don't use much of those. I use mostly this one, I have to say. And then I've also sometimes used, let's see, where is it? I sometimes use Mod Podge to glue pages together, but I don't like gluing, for example, this page. I wouldn't have glued this down with Mod Podge because it makes the page really sticky. Whereas this matte medium doesn't make it so sticky. Now you can rub um, wax on to stop your pages sticking together, but I tend to use that to actually glue things down. Anything else to say about glue? Yeah, a strong white glue PVA type situation would be absolutely perfect. So that's the glue, scissors and cutting supplies. So one, we had collage materials, two, we've had glue and scissors and the craft knife and cutting board. So I'm going to move on to now inks and stampers. So I've grabbed a couple of my, my stamps. I said in the last video, I can't remember where I got these from. So I know I bought them online, probably from horrible Amazon, I'm afraid. And I try not to shop there 
anymore because I like to support small businesses now but that was then and I've had these a long time and they've lasted really well and so there's a couple of examples of my stampers and I've also got a set of alphabet stamps as well these are really useful and I've got three or four different alphabets um, with different letters with different fonts to use as well and different sizes so that they're, they're really really useful for doing things like we stamped the title on here didn't we and on our journaling cards we stamped so it gives that variation of you've got your printed out fonts you've got your lettering from the stampers and you've got handwriting so you've got a nice variety of different text going in your book which adds interest and design elements and it makes it yeah really fun okay so that doesn't shut very well but um it wasn't too expensive so to go with that we then have and this is part of number three as well the inks I absolutely love these for journaling. They're not permanent and they do reactivate when you wet them or glue them. Where this one, the archival one, doesn't. This is a permanent and it won't budge. You can do it on top of anything. And so it's really important to have the different ones. Now you can distress with archival ink as well, but I like the distress because you can really blend it around and it makes things look, let's, let's just have a look some of our ephemera so for example have we we made this last week didn't we and we put just around you can see where it's just had a little bit of green and brown distress ink and it just adds a little something do we have another example as well Yeah, so when I handwrite things and then I, I went round the edges with a bit of, I think I went round with some of that one on there. So that was a walnut stain. But you can buy all sorts of different colours in this, which makes it really fun. I've got a few bright ones as well. So I've got festive berries, for example. Um, milled lavender. And I got these as a, a little set of four. And they're really good because they're stackable. So... You can have fun having a look at all the colours of those. And there are by a company called Ranger, and these are the Tim Holtz um, range. So they just stack really easily. So to go with that, there is um, another thing called a blending tool, which you don't have to buy the Ranger's one. I didn't buy the Ranger's one. You can even make your own with a little bit of felt on the, on, on the end of something so that you can just go around and blend the ink and it's a really nice um, effect nice and smooth so if I show you this little you can see on around the edges I just you know blended a little bit on there to get that nice vintagey effect so that's inks and stampers let's move on to washi tape then I love washi tape so washi tape is number four and I've just got a few of my varieties. These are really easy to find online and there are probably thousands of different designs. But I do think it's fun to use in our journals, whether it's to divide pages up or add borders and outlines around things or to actually take things down. It's really fun to have a little bit of washi tape. It can be expensive, so shop around and you don't need loads, maybe just a couple of rolls just to keep you going. Now, if you've been watching my videos the last few weeks, all the art, making the art journal and then all the things we've been doing in it, you'll know what the next item is. And I got some questions about what type it is. Kadamaru Pro, and it has medium, small and large corner cutters. So I can put a, let's see what I've got. You know, I can put a corner in there and just round it off yeah so that gives me that lovely rounded corner and I really really love that now you don't have to have one you could even have, make yourself a little stencil of a rounded corner and use scissors to cut out but I've really enjoyed using this of late 
and I get very excited about some of the things, how it looks afterwards, even a little something, you know, like, like that. And I can distress it and it, it just makes it really cute and feel special, which might sound completely bonkers, but yeah, <laughs> I'm just being really honest. So let's see then, we've got those, we've done those, haven't we? So the next thing I would say would be my pens, a selection of pens. And I really like gold, I really like white, I like some of these Liquitex paint pens. And I buy all my art supplies and pens anyway from Jackson's Arts and I've got an affiliate link down below. So if you click on the affiliate link, you get 10% off um, your first order and I get a little bit of commission as well and that adds up and then I can spend it in the Jackson's shop if you like. So I'll leave a link to that down below. But I, I do get... Um, maybe not so much the crafty type things, but any, any of my art supplies, I've been buying them from Jackson's direct rather than going to Amazon. Because yeah, Amazon is, yeah, Amazon, isn't it? So what else have I got here? Then I've got a, this is a Signo, just a gold gel pen, quite nice. And, whoops, hang on a sec. I dropped one, sorry. <laughs> I've also got a couple of Sharpies with different points on. So you don't have to have the exact same pens as me, but I do suggest permanent pens are very useful because you can write over anything. And then as I say, I've got my Liquitex paint pens. These are um, kind of like a bullet, a bullet nib and they're nice and bright and permanent. So they're nice to use on art journal pages, nice and easy. You can take them out and about with you if you want to go and sit in a coffee shop or something like that. There's loads and loads of colors. And, you know, there's a nice set by um, Posca as well. I like Posca. So I've got, yeah, this in the white. And I like doing writing and adding little embellishments and things like that on. So that's a really important piece of my journaling kit, pens. Now, speaking of embellishments, I also really like glitter glue for journaling. So this is a really old one from a craft shop. You can buy this anywhere, obviously. I've had to sellotape the bottle because it's split. It's so, so old, but it's still going. So I'm still using that. And if, if you'll have seen the last, was it the last video we did? I think I did use quite a lot of glitter <laughs> on this page. I think because it was like Christmas. So you can see here I've added, you know, glittery bits onto here. <laughs> and um, yeah, all around these bits and bobs as well. And there was glitter already on the card. So it's just a nice little addition to things. Glitter and, you know, collecting a few, let's call them embellishments, shall we? So things like what's stuck on the book or the little charms that you can get. So I've got a little teacup here. Any craft shop or online, you can, you can find little things like this. And... I like adding bits of ribbon as well. So in the glitter section, let's call it embellishments and let's have little things like the teacup and the, I don't know what you'd call that, that sort of decorative 3D frame. And these were really, really budget from the, the budget shop I talked about the works. And I think I got a set of six for about a pound. Um, so that was really, really good value. And I also use things like bells as well so any little embellishments you know dried flowers any little pretty things that you can collect can all be used in your journal bits of lace bits of bits of ribbon bits of velvet all be used and be really useful as well it's almost like having a box of treasure <laughs> I think last but not least would be some paint supplies so it doesn't have to be this this is my sort of professional paint which I tend to use more in my paintings but I've just grabbed a few tubes of acrylic paints and also you know I would have a selection of brushes as well which I can use and so paint is a lovely addition whether you want to add background colors or whether you want to actually paint a little something in your journal it's really useful to have some, some paint supplies, some art supplies as well. And I suppose as a final little bolt on onto there would be something like the Caran d'Ache Neo Colours, which are really lovely to have. 
and they're literally water soluble. These are the Aquarelle ones, so they you can use them like wax crayons, and you can smush them, and they and they blend really nicely. And then you can wet them if you want to, and it creates um, paint. So you can even sort of take these out and about with you and then a little bit of water and you can wet the end and you can paint with them as well like that. So they are lovely. So something like that, a watercolour, water soluble kind of crayon, if you like. Now that's all I need really. Now there are probably hundreds and hundreds of other things that you could add to the list. And so do obviously your own research and find out what you know, what things really light you up. And those are the things to kind of go for, aren't they? The things that are going to bring us joy. And that's my stuff. So obviously it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but the, you can see I've got some ink, I've got some paints, I've got pens, I've got the collage stuff, the practical stuff, and, you know, a few embellishment items as well. And that is really all I use. And the majority of time, I have to say, I don't even use all of that. So if you've watched any of the past few weeks videos, you'll have seen me making some pages. And I, I certainly haven't been using a lot of paint, yeah, or even paint pens. And, and I haven't, I don't think, used those either. So you can really skinny your kit down into something really, really small. And then it makes it really accessible and handy so that you don't have to get loads of stuff out and be, be in a mess. I've even got a really large pencil case. Hang on a sec, I'll see if I can find it. So here's my really large pencil case. And you can see, you know, you can fit all sorts inside. So you could grab a selection and you could literally take it on holiday, take it on an art date, go to a coffee shop. Or just, you know, if you're like me, where you've got a studio that's not at home, I can grab a load of art stuff. This was my travel kit when we were going away in the summer in our van. So you might have seen this before because I did a little, I think a little overview of what I put in my little travel art bag. But yes, it's really handy to have some kind of receptacle, whether it's a box or whether it's um, something like a basket. Um, you know, wh whatever works for you. And obviously you might need something bigger or smaller than me. So that's another really useful little tip to keep yourself journaling, if you like. So it's not such a big deal to get all your stuff out and put it away. It's really simplified. And I like to be quite minimalist as well. So that's the other little thing I do. But if you could see the rest of my studio right now and the floor in particular, you would be probably... <laughs> You'd probably giggle actually because it's an absolute mess and I'm not going to stay and tidy it up today because the heating's broken again. So again, if you've seen any of my other videos, you may remember that this happens intermittently but regularly and it's really annoying and yeah, so I don't want to make this video too long because otherwise I might get cold. <laughs> so I hope that's helped and given you some ideas and happy journaling. Happy, happy new year as well. I'm going to be doing some more art journaling for the new year. And also we've got the Q&A coming up. So I think on the last video, I might have mentioned at the end of the video, leave me any questions for the Q&A that's coming up. And that might be next video or the one after that. I'm not quite sure. And you can leave me questions underneath this video as well. I'll check both to see what questions we've got. And I will do my best to answer as many as I can. So I'm keeping my hat on because, as I say, the heating's not working. So it's a little bit chilly in here. So I'm a bit, a bit like, a, like a pixie today. But I thought before I go, I would show you this Prezi that James got me for Christmas. And it's a new Oracle deck. Now, I love my Oracle decks and I've got a few. But I, I've been had my eye on this one for a little while. And it's a Jane Struthers. And I'll show you a few of the cards and then I thought we could pick a card out for New Year and see what it says. So I'll just shuffle the cards and I'm wishing you a really, really happy 2022 where we can keep our lights shining super bright. It's going to be a good year. It's still a bit unsettling, I know, in the world, but it's still, we can make it a good year. We can be creative and we can go within and we can work in our journals whenever it all feels too much. So. 
because we're all here together and nobody's on their own. We are a big circle of YouTube love, I, I think. I'm cheating a bit because I'm looking at the cards, but let me show you a few of them actually. So we've got, can you see that okay? Look how pretty these are. I hope you can see these okay. The light's okay. Really lovely. Trees from all around the world as well, which I really like. Okay, let's choose one then. I think that one is popping out. Let's see. I'll show you before I show me. It's that one. The banyan tree. Well, I don't have banyan trees where I am. So if you have banyan trees, you let me know in the comments because that looks a pretty magical tree to me. So I'm just looking up the meaning. It's our end of 2021 message. Page 32, let's see. The banyan tree. There's the page, look. I'll read a bit out. So it says, the banyan diva message. I can teach you how to anchor yourself within the world to increase your sense of being grounded. I have given shelter to people for thousands of years so that man, plants and other living creatures can all survive together. The banyan is easily recognised because of its remarkable habit of sending aerial roots down into the soil where they become additional trunks that support the ever-expanding canopy. Eventually the complex network of extra trunks enable a single tree to spread across several acres. Wow! This can provide invaluable shade and shelter for scores of people at a time. The banyan is sacred in India and the Vedas and Upanishads associate it with Brahma, the immortal god of creation. Both the bark and the leaf buds are used in Ayurveda to staunch bleeding. So there we go, the banyan tree to end our 2021 our message. And when I've pulled a card, I tend to journal about it as well. So I will make a note in my journal about that later on. So I better leave you in peace for now and go home and get warm because it's getting chilly in here now. And I hope you have a really happy new year and gentle entry into 2022. And then I'll see you soon and we'll do some more journaling. And I just want to say a really big thank you for everybody that's watched the videos and liked and commented and subscribed to my channel in 2021. I really, really appreciate you. It's helped us grow and build this lovely YouTube Circle of Love community. So thank you so, so much. And don't forget to leave me your questions down below this video and then that will come up in the Q&A in a week or two. So try to keep your lights shining bright and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Mwah.